that can progress. I hope you're doing fine wherever you are. Now, so last time, if I remember, uh, well, we were looking at um, we were looking at the switch case. Uh, we're almost uh, finishing. And I'd given an example uh, to wrap it up. I'd given an example, uh, basically, to wrap it up. Uh, I think uh, if my memory serves me well, uh, I'd given an example of this nature. Uh, developing a calculator uh, with two numbers and allowing uh, a user uh, to make some basic make some basic mathematical operations uh, whether addition subtraction modular uh, the modulars and so on and so forth okay so the one that I'd given you was using characters, uh, the operators themselves, okay? So I told you to um, redefine it to, redefine it to have um, a menu, define it to have a menu and display something of this nature display something of this nature. Okay. So how do we uh, modify our program to have that look? Uh, the, case, the case structure usually have this uh, format. I'd explain that uh, uh, in our previous class. So um, let's just, let me just show you how that will be undertaken. Okay. So it will, uh, You'll have to ensure that uh, you give this give this breakdown to your user. Okay. In this particular order. Okay. So enter number. Enter number. Then the mathematical operator, you give the choices. Uh, then um, you ask for the preferred uh, the preferred operator that the user would like to use. Okay. So you'll have case one representing addition, case two representing subtraction, case three representing multiplication and case four representing division. Then the default case will be something like invalid input or incorrect operator. Or incorrect operator so that you synchronize uh, what you've given on the on the menu and what uh, your program will be ready okay so it's just a matter of substituting it's just a matter of substituting a one two three 
uh, with the right um, operations here. So under each case, you'll ensure that you execute the relevant uh, piece of code. So under case one, execute an addition operator for the two uh, numbers that are going to be entered. And the same uh, will appear for case two, case three, case four, and then of course the default will give us uh, the non-existence of or an error uh, based on what you've entered uh, to the system, okay? So that is what you're supposed to come out with. Uh, I trust and believe maybe you are able to um, come up with something like this, okay? and uh, put the relevant. So I want us to move to a different uh, type of structure, that is control structure, control structures. So there's conditional structures, and then there's control structures. So you can pick up the definition. You can pick up the definition. Okay, so I was trying to still fix up uh, the source. Now, so um, under control structures, we have um, uh, two, two major control structures. We have the for loop and the while loop. Then we derive the do while loop uh, from the while loop. So what are these uh, structures supposed to achieve? We also call them repetition structures, or we also call them loops. Reason being, uh, they perform repetitive actions. Okay, they perform repetitive actions. Uh, this uh, type of uh, structures are used across the board, irrespective of the type of language. you're trying to bring across, okay? So uh, the syntax is what uh, will differ from one language to the other, okay? And the, uh, the difference in syntax will not that, uh, will, will not that big, be big. It's just going to be a matter of semicolon, um, where we put semicolon, where we put the condition, where we put the initialization and so on and so forth. So it's not going to be a huge difference uh, in terms of the uh, the representation of the syntax, okay? So if you look at in with the for loop, okay, there are three items that you need to uh, pick up in uh, designing a for loop, or if you want to use a for loop in your program, then there are three things you need to look at. You need to look at initialization, you need to look at condition, and you need to look at the increment. I want you to notice the, the way the, the syntax appears uh, because um, 
when you go to the while loop and the do while loop, uh, you need to get the difference. You need to get uh, at what point do they differ? Okay. So now, what is counter initialization or what is initialization? Now, for you to repeat a certain process, for you to repeat a certain process, or basically for you to count, just the way we do in mathematics, you must begin from somewhere. Okay. So, like for instance, you say, uh, I want to go around this field 20 times. And you say, let's begin counting from 10. From 10, then it means for you to do 20, you'll count up to, is it about 30? Okay, you'll count up to about 30 from 20. So you'll do 20 all through to, and uh, for you to do 20 rounds, okay, you'll count for 10 up to 30, okay? If I begin from zero, I'll count from zero to about 19 or something like that, okay? Now, that is what we That's what we are talking about here. So this is supposed to give you a starting point. Because this is uh, the loop is supposed to help us do some counting. So as we count, then certain specific uh, pieces of uh, of commands execute. Okay, as we do the counting. Okay, so you must begin from somewhere. That where we begin the counting process is what we call initialization. So you give it an to be able to achieve the counting process. Then, if you begin at 10, the way I was mentioning there, then you agree that we'll stop at 30 for us to have counted 12 rounds. Okay? It means I must have somewhere to stop. That is the condition. So I'm saying I'm starting at 10 but I should not go up to 31, or I should not go past that. That's a condition. And the increment, which is here, the increment, which is here, is supposed to help us move from 10 to 30. Or it can be a decrement, meaning you're moving from 30 to 10. You're moving from 30 to 10. So it can either be an, to increase, that is increment, or to decrease, that is decrement. How exactly uh, they are performed, the two. If you're increasing or decreasing, how are we going to do that? Mathematically, at the back of your mind, you know, if you want to increase, you add. If you want to decrease, you subtract. That's why uh, moving from 10 to 30, you can't uh, decrement, okay? Or moving from 30 to 10, you can't increment because if you're moving from 30 to 10, there's no way adding will give you the, uh, the right value or give you what you want, okay? Then there are statements to be executed. There are statements to be executed. Okay, so if the, each, each time we count one round, we execute that statement. Each time we count one round, we execute that statement until we meet the condition that has been provided for. Let's consider an example down here. So I will move a little bit fast. Let's consider an example down there. What do you think that example is going to achieve? Think that example is going to achieve. OK. 
Okay. Now, so this example here, uh, basically is supposed to achieve um, a simple thing as presented here by the comment, print, five times, print that statement five times. And the statement that is given is this one. Very, very important in uh, looping, you have to know how to associate a statement with the for structure or with the for loop. So the opening and the closing braces here, I don't know if you are seeing them, the opening and the closing braces here are meant to enclose this statement within the for loop. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, any other statement, any other statement that is also enclosed here will be repeated as many times as the condition require. So always when you're writing your program, always when you're writing your program, ensure, ensure you do a proper structure, what you enclose and what you don't enclose. So this is going to be our counting uh, variable. You know how to define a variable, that's the same thing. That's going to be our counting variable. And we're going to begin from one. This is now the initialization. We are going to begin counting from one. And we are saying, we are going to count until we are equal to five or less than five. So if you are to do it five times, if you want to do it five times, that means you're going to count from one all through to five. So you stop at counter equals to five. Stop at counter equals to five, not less. Because if you stop at four, I'm sure if you do the physical counting, uh, you must have not one five times. Now, the increment here, we have, we have an increment because we are moving from one to five. We need to add. Increment here, counter plus plus. This two operator or the plus plus means that for each execution, for each execution, add one, okay, add one. So until all the five rounds are finished, you add one. This can also be re-expressed as counter. So allow me to write uh, the C just to mean counter is equals to counter plus one. That expression there will mean exactly the same thing as counter plus plus. But is the default uh, way of adding one or subtracting one in programming. So if you want to subtract one, you will say counter minus minus C, which is counter is equals to counter minus one. So every time we go round, we subtract one or every time we go around, we add one. Hope we are okay. 
So this is the output. It will print that statement five times. And the reason why it is printing it in different line is because of the uh, forward slash and uh, backward slash, which we call an escape code, an escape code. escape code that is supposed to help us in printing new line so its job is to ensure that once the statement is printed the cursor moves to the next line for the new printing okay until we achieve the five uh, printouts that we wanted okay <clears throat> so a further explanation is given Further explanation is given there. Maybe when I share the notes, you can have a look at it. Yeah. So there are questions here. There are questions here. Write a C program to display all the integers from 100 to 200. Write a program to calculate the sum of all the even numbers up to up to one hundred. You can try that very fast. Let me just bring up my compiler. Meanwhile, you can try it on your own. Try those questions on your own. So as usual, just go to um, create a new program or create a new project. Uh, do a console application. Let's check that. Pick the right language. Pick the right language. Next, put some program name. If you want to if you want to change um, if you want to change the uh, the storage or where the program is being stored you have the option there the four dots there click on it it will give you uh, that option to uh, choose ahead of where you want your program to store mine will just be stored randomly not sure exactly where but somewhere within the, uh, the computer i just want to move it out of my um, uh, my system folder that is 
C. So I'll just move it out uh, briefly to somewhere. I'll be able to uh, delete it very fast. Okay. Next, then you finish up. Okay. So once you finish up, expand the plus sign under sources. <clears throat> that is, if you don't want to create a new program, pick the main dot c, pick main dot c. That's basically an initial program. An initial program that is always given in um, code blocks, just to try and uh, help you around. Okay, just try and help you around. So um, our question was, how do I go back there? Um, you write a program that uh, will compute uh, the sum of uh, how many numbers were those? Let me just verify that. Okay, meanwhile, we can just start. I hope you can be able to see what I've, uh, I've written. I'll try to expound it uh, as much as possible. Now, uh, so we have um, we have a header file there, stdlib. Now, this header file is not really important as, as uh, now. The one that is important to us is the stdio.edge use this program edit it and uh, come up with what we are looking for okay now so we want a program that uh, will do some addition okay uh, one before we uh, check the question i'll need some variables so i can be clear one int let me call it count again. Counting of those uh, rounds that we're going to move. The other one, let me call uh, some float. Or okay, so I need uh, to count a certain number of variables and then sum them together. Okay, let me just go back to the question and uh, find out. Yeah, it was reading write a program to calculate the sum of all even numbers up to 100. Okay, program to calculate the sum of all even numbers up to 100. Okay. So I'm just trying to um, do this on the compiler so that uh, you can also see how uh, the compiler if works. That is, if you've not worked on it. So program, do a comment there. Program to of even numbers. up to 100, okay? So that's the program we're writing, yeah, program we're writing. So that's my comment there, okay? So I need a counter, I need a, a variable here called sum to do the storage. Then what I'm going to do next is, uh, I can bring on board the for loop and then say for counter, to begin so the question said up to 100 so i can begin from zero okay then 
I'll give the condition. So we're going to say counter okay, should be less than or equals to 100. It's always safer to do less than or equals to. Let the compiler decide. Okay. Counter less than or equals to 100. Then I'm moving up. I'm incrementing. Okay. So Okay, it's plus plus. Uh, I wanted to bring an if statement there. I wanted to bring an if statement there. Okay. But still, still, I can do without the if statement. Remember, we are looking for even numbers. Okay, we're looking for even numbers. So therefore, probably it will be of great good for me to say counter is equals to counter plus two. So that I will have the advantage of moving from zero, okay? Moving from zero to two, when you add two to two, you get four, six, eight, and so on and so forth. So I'll have that advantage because I'm allowed to begin from anywhere. Okay. So you can say instead of adding one, by two, 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 two. two. Okay. I jump by two, two, two. Then remember, don't terminate a condition. Don't terminate a condition. Don't put a semicolon after a, a condition or a loop. So like for instance, the for loop, don't put a condition at the end of it, okay? You see mine is empty. So don't put a condition at the end of it. You want to do the sum. You want to do the sum, okay? So that is what should be inside here. That's what should be inside here. So I open up the bracket. And now I'm going to do my sum. But the question is, the question is, in mathematics, it's normally advisable that if you're counting, if you're counting, or if you're adding values together, always begin from zero. So that you say zero plus two is two, two plus two is four, four plus two, six, and so on and so forth, okay? So here I'll say some because is equals to zero. Float sum is equals to zero. So that it begins from zero. Then my counting will be easier from here. So I'll say, as the counter moves from zero all through to 100, and adding two to each, meaning skipping odd numbers, then sum is equal as counter. Sum is equal to sum plus count. Okay. Then I can safely close this. I can safely close that. Then say after the sum has been counted and uh, been brought up. Then we can say print F. Okay. The sum is I said F because uh, <clears throat> so I said F because it's a uh, a float. Okay. 
So that program there, if you execute, will be able to give you able to give you the sum of even numbers from zero to hundred. So the catch here is the catch here is counter plus two. Yeah, the catch here is counter plus two. So counter is equals to counter plus two. So for each execution, add two to the count until we get up to hundred. Any question? You can execute it on your side. Any question? Swali. Now, so the challenge I'm going to post to you, the challenge I'm going to post to you is to modify that program, modify that. You modify that program so that, modify that program so that you find the sum, you find the sum, of all numbers between three to hundred that are divisible by two or even numbers rather from three to one hundred from three to one hundred Hope you got that question. You alter the program to some values that are divisible by two in the range of three to one hundred. Okay, so you can try that. Uh, if there's no question, then we can uh, proceed. So the program I've just written is uh, here. Program I've just written. So you can see there's a new expression here that is being brought forward. So this expression here, counter plus equals to two, is just similar to saying counter is equals to counter plus plus two. You can express it as counter is equals to counter plus two. Uh, uh, maybe you have, uh, as you run that program, uh, you where you might also get an error. Uh, kindly put the counter is equals to counter plus two in bracket. Okay, let it have a brackets of its own. 
so that it doesn't look like uh, uh, two different uh, expressions. It doesn't look like two different expressions. So a number of examples down here, you can uh, uh, post them there, then you can try them out and uh, share out. Okay, so example to five four, we can share them out on the platform. You just write your piece of code, uh, you paste there, then we see um, uh, the the reasoning behind it. Okay, so ensure that as you put up your program, uh, as you put up your program, always always give comments so that others who are also looking at it, others who are also looking at it, uh, will also be able to understand what uh, you are trying to do. Move them down. Okay, let's move on. Uh, now, so uh, in looping or in uh, uh, control uh, conditional structures, uh, we have two types of uh, loops. Finite loops and infinite loops. So finite loops will stop at some point. Infinite loops will run continuously. And actually, um, infinite loops are not preferable anywhere, even in our networks. We don't prefer infinite loops. Execute without an end. Okay, so what we've done previously are uh, old called uh, finite loops because we've given a specific condition where the uh, the program should stop. Okay, so there's an example here that is given. That is an infinite one. Really, there's really no specific condition where to stop, where to start. Okay, and so on. So it's going to run continuously unless you break it uh, using an external command.
So we can proceed. So that's for loop. That's for loop. So uh, the rest are just examples. You can uh, have a look at them uh, at a different time. So there are a number of examples that will come in. Uh, we can look at them all uh, uh, at once. We can uh, just provide the basic syntax. Then uh, moving forward now, we can always run through um, other examples. Let's look at the while loop. Let's look at the while loop. Now, so, um, slightly different in terms of uh, syntactical expression okay but doing almost the same thing not even almost doing almost uh, doing the same thing as the for loop so uh, the beauty of programming is that there is always uh, so many ways to do the same thing just like Uh, in mathematics, where several formulas exist that can allow you to arrive at the same answer uh, from different direction. So while we'll do exactly what uh, the for loop is doing, but from a different perspective. So among other things that uh, uh, the while loop will miss, that is part of a for loop, is the initialization and increment. So while loop will not give you a definite, will not give you a definite location within its syntax where to put those two, initialization and increment. Uh, so based on um, what you're writing, based on what you're writing, as a programmer, you'll take charge and place uh, the while uh, the initialization and increment in the relevant uh, positions. So that's the syntax. So you can see it's only the condition that we have as part of its syntax. Therefore, the others will take care of as a programmer. You'll be able to see where exactly to, to place them. And of course, you'll realize that uh, uh, where you place those statements will matter a lot because they'll dictate or they'll define They'll define how your program is executing. So consider example 5.4. What do you think is going to be the output for that program? Okay, so if you look at that program, uh, one, the initialization is passed to the user through this line. So we are telling the user, give us a number that will give us a number that will be used to check uh, how many times the program will execute the statement under the while condition. 
So we are saying, well, the number given by the user is not equal to zero. Not equal to zero. Then you print out hello world. Print out hello world. Decrement the value of number or the value of num by one for each execution. For each execution. Now, you can chart your response. What do you think is going to be the output of this program? Negative one. What do you think is going to be the output of this program if the user enter negative one? In case the entry for num or num is negative one, then definitely you realize that uh, the program will execute. There was a statement here. As perfectly restricted that to zero. So while num is not equal to zero, do it. Okay? Do it. So the counting. or the looping structure that is presented there can definitely run into an infinite loop. Uh, the, the representation there um, had assumed NUM must be a positive value so that it will be decremented up to zero and then the program will stop. But now if you bring on board the negative values, then it brings a challenge, okay? It brings a challenge uh, to that particular uh, piece of code. But the most important thing is check how the increment or decrement has been expressed. Check how uh, the initialization has been done. Here we are telling the user we are going to use. Now, so what you'd also need to take care of is ensure the increment or decrement is put in the right place. If this is brought out here, okay, at that position, meaning is not within these two calibrations, then 
it will be executed once the condition becomes false because the condition will rotate here condition will rotate here condition is true okay so if the condition becomes false the condition um, the execution is passed out of the while loop and it moves to the next line out of the program out of the the while um, loop uh, body it moves out to the other lines within the program body to continue the execution process So that is the uh, output if you enter five. So that's why I was saying that uh, the assumption was that uh, you will uh, enter a positive value. Okay, so that's the question that is being raised here. Now, what do you think should be done to answer exercise 5.5? What do you think should be done to answer exercise 5.5? Yes? Any attempt?
Okay, so uh, I hope we are together. I hope we are together. Are we together? You make me imagine that uh, maybe my voice is not, uh, uh, my audio is not going through. Okay. You make me imagine that my audio is not going through. Now, what you do, what you do is, uh, you just need to, sorry for that, you just need to Just need to change the operator there. Just need to change the operator. For instance, if you want to, that program only to work with positives, then um, you you will say that uh, um, while num is uh, greater than zero, okay, while uh, num is greater than zero, uh, then the execution should take place so that uh, immediately it goes below one then the program stops, okay? Immediately it goes below, the program stops. As part of how you can answer question uh, exercise 5.5, .5, just to ensure that you only work with positive values. Just change the operator there and you're good to go. Yes, lastly uh, is the do I look? The do I look? Candy, Candy, if your background is, is noisy, you mute yourself, okay? If your background is noisy. Okay. So in the do while loop, um, just like the while loop, you take charge of initialization and increment or decrement. That is left to the discretion of the programmer to see a way through. Okay. Now, in a do while loop is one of the the conditions is one of the conditions one of the conditions for looping structures where you terminate a condition or you terminate, check on that, okay? The while, then condition, then you have the semicolon. So this is only where you terminate, uh, this is where you terminate a statement that involves either loop or a control structure. So even if, uh, uh, not even if, but, uh, even with the hair, if, else, switch, and so on, we don't terminate, okay? We don't terminate. But now this, you are allowed to do that. So the do while will depend on, um, will depend on the while to test the condition check whether it's still true or false. And the do will only be executing the statement. So here we normally say, in a do while uh, loop structure, the statement is executed
the statement is executed at least once, whether the condition is true or false. Because in C programming, it is top-down approach. So our execution moves like this. So that means the compiler will meet this statement even before it knows whether the conditions are true or, or false. Okay, so here, at least once before the condition is evaluated. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's look at a, a basic example of uh, the while loop or the do while loop. Okay. So you're putting up a statement or you're putting up a program to automatically execute automatically execute when different prices are entered you can imagine um, uh, maybe the the supermarket just the way uh, the the barcode reader uh, operates together with the with the the database on the back end on the prices of those particular uh, goods and services, uh, goods that are being bought from there. Okay, so at uh, this program here, uh, we'll execute, we'll execute. As long as the price of the value bought, as long as the price of the value bought is greater than zero, check the condition here. Sorry, check the condition here and the comment. So, this, this is what I was telling you that you comment your program just to ensure that. Uh, uh, the readability is improved uh, significantly, okay? The readability is improved significantly.
Okay, so we'll uh, pick the price, or not pick the price, but we'll have three variables, price, two variables, price and total. And uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, that uh, if you're working on summation, you're adding some values together, always, always begin from zero. That's a mathematical rule. If you're multiplying, always begin from one. Always begin from one. So if I tell you, for instance, to modify this program such that uh, it will multiply multiply price per item and the number of items bought number of items bought then you think about how do we multiply without changing the the meaning okay so the questions will come where now you don't need an addition but you need to do the multiplication so i'm saying as a mathematical um, rule if you are adding several numbers begin from zero if you're multiplying numbers all the two will never change the meaning of what you're doing i mean if you add zero it will not change you multiply by one it will not change the uh, the final result okay so we are saying that uh, if you want to end this program you are zero so if you enter zero for price, then this condition will be violated because we are saying only allow the do to execute the statements if and only if the price is above zero. So immediately the price uh, it sees to work. Even if you enter negative value, it ceases to work because the price has to be greater than zero. So a negative value is less than zero, so it will stop working. Reason being, uh, to make the program valid, uh, price of an item cannot be zero and price of an item cannot be a negative. So just, just try to ensure that the program you're writing also reflects the, uh, the real world, reflects the real world solutions, okay? Yes. Then you can print it out um, and mention that uh, this syntax here, uh, you will meet it at some point but it's just the normal one that we are doing. It's only that uh, we are trying to control the number of uh, decimals that is going to come out uh, because we're using a float or a double. But still the same thing, still the same thing. Even if you get rid of the still will be able to work out. You print out the total of what has been calculated. So you can see, uh, don't uh, get confused with this statement. I think I'd mentioned it earlier. Total plus equals to price is the same as saying total is equals to total plus price. Just the same thing we did the other side. Counter is equals to counter plus uh, sum. Uh, sum is equals to uh, sum plus counter. You can re-express it in that particular format. Uh, just a shortened uh, form. Yes. That's a prob uh, the output. That's the output. So look at exercise 
and raise any questions that you have. Otherwise, um, I will post the notes. You can have a look at them in details. In details. And try the examples that have been given there. Okay, so that marks the end of the control structures. Also known as the loops or repetitive structures. So what is, uh, we need, also we need to look at um, that I would prefer you go ahead and uh, look at is how to nest these conditions or how to nest these structures. Nesting, I think we had looked at it previously, basically means uh, more than um, a single statement, uh, a more condition or control structure or conditional structure, whichever, are put together to achieve one objective. So for instance, the program that I told you uh, initially to do, to calculate the sum of all numbers between three to 100, that program there, because you're beginning from three, you're beginning from three and you want even numbers, there's there's no way you will modify the four structure to achieve even numbers counting from three. If you add two, you'll go to five. If you add two, you go to seven. So you can see you are jumping the even numbers that you want. So that is an example where you'll need nesting of structures to achieve your objective. So probably, and hint, need to use a for loop to do the counting from three to 100, and an if statement together with the modular side to check the divisibility. So as the loop, the for loop do the counting or the while, you can even use the while, as they do the counting, then the if statement test whether the value or the number coming from the for loop is divisible by two or not. So if it is divisible by two, we sum it or we add it to our total. If it is not, we don't, we ignore it. So those two statements or those two structures will work simultaneously together. They'll work together. One is counting, the other one is checking the divisibility. Such expression is what we call nested structures. Okay, so I want you to go and check on that question. And um, put these notes there, you will find those structures there. Okay, you will find those structures there. So kindly, let's look at them. Nesting of loops. So this is loops, but you can nest uh, loops together with the control structure. That is if, switch, and so on and so forth. So they, they work together. They are supposed to work together. So I want you to go and study 5.4 as you think about the question that uh, are given there. Okay. So once you study 5.4, once you study 5.4,
Yeah, once you study that, I'm going to give an assignment. Okay, I'm going to give an assignment. So I'll post the content there and the assignment that uh, you're supposed to work on. Okay, so can you read through nesting of uh, loops? Nesting of loops themselves and nesting of loops and other structures that we've looked at uh, before. Yes, can you raise any question that uh, require an answer? Raise any question that requires an answer. Uh, Cynthia, this is your official name. Okay. It's so unique, huh? Very, very unique. Now, yes, so uh, always uh, uh, feel free to seek help at any time, okay? So that we see back in Yuma. Yeah, we are here to help you. Uh, catch up so there's a number of programming units that are coming ahead of you and uh, this is the foundation so these are the basics this is the foundation uh, you need to get it right you try as much as possible to grasp something out of uh, the topics that we are talking about Yes, otherwise, if there's no question, then uh, I will bring this class to an end. And uh, thank you for attending. I see you next week. Yeah, so I've had a bit of challenge with my audio. It's connecting, uh, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting. Uh, I don't know what's the problem uh, with the platform on my side. My audio is not doing very well. Yeah, so thank you. And I'll see you next week for this unit.